Good morning, and a very warm welcome. Um, my name is Lisa Teisel. I'm from the UNISA Directorate for Counseling and Career Development. Um, thank you for making time this morning to um, attend this presentation. We will be talking about the practical workplace readiness skills that will make you stand out in the crowd. And we are joined by Ms. Cleopatra Pakati to help us to discuss this. I'm just going to hand over to my colleague, Mrs. Makanya, mm -hmm. and she will welcome and introduce the speaker. Thank you very much, Mandu. Thank you, Lisa. It gives me pleasure this morning to welcome and introduce our own grad and alumni who will be addressing our students this morning. She is an HR specialist who possesses more than 15 years experience in HR practice with, area cover, with areas covering talent management, performance management, organizational development, change management, succession planning recruitment, and training and development. As a speaker, Cleo is a, Cleo is a speaker and a coach. She takes pride in transforming lives by empowering managers to have the skills and abilities to coach their employees, helping individuals, teams, and organizations to realize their full potential and reach their desired goals, empowering employees to focus on the value they, they can bring to organizations, and coaching individuals that want to be the best versions of themselves. She holds a BA social science uh, degree Majored, she majored in psychology and industrial psychology. She has a postgraduate diploma in marketing, a BA honors in industrial psychology, a master's in business leadership. She also has a certificate as a life coach practitioner, and she is a certified life coach. Over and above her qualifications, she has authored two books titled Redeeming the Time, which is an inspirational book and Building My Character, a children's series. What she enjoys most, um, it's being a mom <clears throat> to four boys and also being a wife. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Miss Cleo Pagati. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, um, Mandu. Um, Cleo, you're welcome to shape um, your camera with us. To start with your presentation. Um, good morning, everyone. Can you see me? That is me right there. We can see you clear. Yes, so I'm going to share my screen and switch off my camera. Okay, thank you so much. I greet um, the organizers of the session, Mem Hazel, Mem Lisa, Mem Lisa, as well as Mr. Becky. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you what I believe are critical skills in the workplace. And, um, you know, when when I was preparing this, I was just also reflecting on my journey um, from my days at UNISA, by the way, um, those that may not be aware, and I'm sure most of the audience are not aware that I was once in that, you know, chair that they probably sitting in I was a student myself. I was a mentee of Mem Hazel. I actually worked in the student center for counseling for, for some time before I actually got a permanent job. So um, yes, I think being part of this, and, and I'm still very excited and happy to see that you are continuing with such a brilliant job that has ensured that some of us actually get to testify about the work that 
you do there because I know that I am where I am because of your center playing a critical role in 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 our careers. Um, I've already been introduced. I'm an author, life coach, but most importantly, the reason for me being here today is because of my HR experience, I believe. But I've also, you will see in my presentation that I've actually taken my HR experience put it together with the life coaching or coaching rather because that is actually where I even want to specialize in going forward. Um, coaching or being in HR has actually given me the leverage, the advantage to um, assess you know from a first hand what the workplace require from employees and i'm hoping to inculcate that in employees and so i am going to talk to you as employees today because whether you are in your first year or postgraduate or whatever i believe that we are here because you want to understand what will make you fully effective productive and even stand out in a workplace so i just want to confirm again that i'm audible my presentation is visible and i can proceed with the presentation um, yes, Cleo, thank you. OK, thank you so much. We will be taking questions um, or inputs as, as we go along. And Lisa will let me know if there is a hand or a question. Maybe I think questions in the inbox will be in order. If When there are questions, we will just pause, go to the questions, and I will try to respond to those as much as I can or as possible as I can. I've, I've written there that a whole, a world of work, it's totally a different world. M most of the things that I'm going to mention today are based on a book. If you can find yourself this book, you would have done yourself a favor, especially if you are entering the workplace for the first time and you just don't know what to expect, you would want to be prepared. There's an amazing book by Caris Anderson and the title of the book is Intelligence Isn't Enough. And that is what my talk is also going to focus on today because when, when you look at the skills that are required in the workplace, most of the skills you, you most of them, if not all of them, you are aware of them. The communication skills, the project management skills, the um, interpersonal skills and so forth. So I, I really want to take an angle of being as practical as possible um, by trying to give you the skills that I believe that they do not just get you the work, but help you to stay because getting the work is something else, but staying in your job and, and like really having that staying power where you get to make a, an impact, make a difference um, as an employee, mind you, even as a business owner is what I am hoping to achieve with today's presentation. And just the quotation that I would like to start off with there by Linda, it says in the end, it's about the work, not an award that you get for the work. And for me, that is quite important. Be, having been in a workplace um, for, for more than 15 years and you know, I'm just seeing how sometimes employees get entitled to certain things. I have to daily remind myself that I am there to do my job and and especially if you are like some of us you believe in in a higher power you believe in God you you always believe that it, it's not even about getting that performance bonus you know at the end of the year or whenever but it's really about 
planting seeds even for your future, whether you would love to proceed to having your own business in future or you, you, you just want to climb the corporate ladder, how you work, how the dedication, what you give in, what you put in will eventually you know pay off and and like i'm saying with this quotation sometimes it pays off differently sometimes it's not necessarily about the performance bonus because that a performance bonus is exactly that it's a bonus there, there are times when organizations don't even have the means to pay those bonuses and you can now not say you are going to withhold your services or you are just going to do the bare minimum because you're not going to get a performance bonus i mean look and how hit organizations have been, companies have been with, with COVID-19 and, and, and so forth. So th there's some level of integrity, you know, that is required when you go into a workplace. And perhaps that is where I would like to start, to really have the integrity of doing your work like somebody is watching you even when nobody is watching you. The integrity to give your work your all and perhaps even more if if you can because you 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 are not just doing it for your manager you are actually doing it for yourself you are stretching yourself and it's in stretching yourself that you get to see how much more are you capable of and you get to grow in the process now what um Carrie says in her book intelligence is not enough will just shock you a bit that it's only 30 percent of the success that is attributed to education and hard skills so so this is so what you've been doing all along at school at university actually that then um gives you 30 percent leverage 70 percent of this success is the ability to manage yourself it is the ability to work well with others hence i said that i'm going to really be practical and brutal and give it i can relate to this book so much because i wish I had read this book before I started working, but again, I still don't regret because reading it now, I look back and I, re I could relate to most of the things that are um, in the book and that the book is talking about. And now Daniel Goleman takes it even further to say that 80% to 90% of the differentiating skills that contribute to success actually are accounted for by EQ, not even your IQ. It is your EQ that makes you to stand out because if you can manage yourself, if you can manage working with others, then you can do your job like excellently. And lastly, also that the university environment is different from a corporate environment. You know, at school, at university, you, you don't need to have a good relationship with your lecturer, you know, for you to make it. You can just pitch up for class, do your work, do your schoolwork, do your assignments, um, write your exams and you get your A's, you get your B's, whatever that you get. You, 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 you can actually get through school unless you are in some project <laughs> where you now have to work in a team setup and, and that team, it may not even be for a long time and, and you know, but you can actually most of the time get through university without even having to make friends or work with your with your fellow learners, especially if you're quite a brilliant person. But that's different from a corporate environment. In a workplace, in a corporate environment, you need to work with people. You work with people because if you are not reporting to somebody, you are managing somebody or you are working with other people, it's very rare that you actually, it is just you and your job 
um, there's there's always interaction with with other people that is required. So what you thought you need to make an impact may probably have been these three. You may have thought, if I can work hard, I've got the qualification, I've got the technical skills, then I'm good to go. That is that is what most of us think when, when we leave university, at least. However, it is a balance between the working hard, qualifications, technical skills. It is knowing yourself and we'll get into that in more detail as, as we go along. It is knowing others, like I have said, and it is also knowing your environment. Knowing your environment is quite important and that is why you will realize that some of the interviews they would even want to know, they're interested to know or to see that you know what the company is all about, the vision, the mission, so that they can see if you are a fit to the corporate culture, if you are a fit to the brand of the company. Although I know with, you know, with high in unemployment, we, I'm sure some of us, we, we just want work. It, it, it couldn't, it matters less where we get the job as long as we have the job. However, it is always important to know what the company stands for. Um, when you start the job, acquaint yourself with the culture, with the way of doing things, because that will also help you go a long way in that particular environment. Can I proceed? No questions. How do we crack the world of work? I'll just proceed. I will take um, notification from you, Lisa, if there's anything I need to pause because I can't see hands. I can't see anything. I can just see the presentation. Yeah, um, yes. it was just uh, one question so far. Um, Similani is asking, what can I do as a student to start developing um, the workplace skills? OK, um, maybe that one can I ask that we we pause it a bit and hopefully the presentation will will answer that. Is that OK, Smelan? I think the presentation will cover that and we'll go back to it if if maybe he or she still not covered. OK, no problem. OK, so the number one thing that I would like to advise is to ensure that as you get into that workplace, as you get into that business, that corporate environment, make sure that you work in your career as much as you work on your career. So there is a difference between working in your career and working on your career. Working in your career is doing what is expected of you on a daily basis, doing the job, as agreed with yourself and your manager and so forth. But working on your career is, is, is quite intentional. It's something that requires strategic planning from your side. Um, it's, it's essentially the same as even being a student. You know, you can, um, and that is why I also even put business in there. You, the, you can work in your business and you can work on your business. Working in your business will be serving your customers and you know delivering the goods or products that that you you are trading. Um, but when you're working on something, when you're working on your career, when you're working on your business, you are intentional about the relationships. The people that you interact with, the people that you relate with. I've mentioned the different relationships that you have. You have clients, you have you have subordinates, you have colleagues, you have managers. And, and at some point you even have project managers. So you find that you're reporting to one manager, but there's another manager who is a project manager somewhere and so forth. So you need to to work on those enablers because those are the things that can make you enjoy your job, thrive in your job, and they can also do the opposite. 
working on your career in, in, in involves ex take exploiting opportunities that are there when there are development opportunities take those when when we, you are performing on a daily basis monthly basis weekly basis you get feedback get the feedback because with the feedback you are able to know where do you need to improve where you're doing well where you're not doing well coaching and uh, your branding remember as a person as an employee as a human being you have your own brand and you have your own brand whether you are um, conscious or unconscious about it but if you are conscious about it then you become intentional about it so you are constantly checking what are the things that are defining you what are the things that when we talk about cleopatra in a workplace what comes to people's minds so those are the things that you need to be conscious of so that you can be intentional about them so i think the number one skill here for you to work in all these things would be for me becoming intentional you need to be intentional with 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 your work again like i said on your business it, it's similar you you working on your business means taking a step back to see how to 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 strategize or re-strategize who are your clients who are you serving why are you serving them and and you will also find as as i go through the presentation that the question why becomes quite important and speaking of why there is the why you always need to know your why why do you do what you do why do you work at a place that you're working at because me being in a workplace now i can tell you that even the employees that i will be working with my colleagues and if, if they're complaining about their work i i need to remind them but why are you still here because we may think that we don't really have much of a choice but some we actually do and if you think about it there will be a reason why you are doing something so getting to know your why always gives meaning and purpose to what you do and going back to people you know i want to emphasize that work is about people you are serving people you are delivering service to people you are delivering products to people you are a human being to begin with you are working with people you are reporting to people people are reporting to you so there is so much about people in there that is why eq actually becomes quite important that is why knowing other people is just as important as having the right qualifications as knowing yourself um at my workplace we're currently working on digitization but you know what even with organizations that are go are becoming digitally enabled with the fourth industrial revolution and so forth we we are realizing day by day that the work still requires human intervention and i also want to encourage you to work on your master plan don't just go to work or get a job and just go there and go with the flow you need to know what what are you there to do what are your goals you know because this is what then um differentiates average employees from distinctive employees what is what are you hoping to achieve do you, do you just want to do your bare minimum go home end of the month get that salary or do you actually want to become a an outstanding employee because in in different um phases of our lives we we have different plans you know um there's there's been how, how can I, I i want to make an example there's been a phase in my life where because I was studying, I knew that 
I can only just do so much when it comes to my work. But there are years when I tell myself I'm here for two to three years. I need to do this, finish and move on to to the next job or or whatever. So you always you you cannot afford to just go with the flow because you look down the line, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, you have been going with the flow. But if you have a plan, you also know that my next move actually now requires for me to accumulate the skills it requires a this qualification so you know what you need to do and know what your definition of success is and your definition of success is also based on your values as a person and also remember that there are trade-offs you know there are things that at some point for you to get the one thing you have to forego the other like i'm saying that at at one point in my life i knew that i may not necessarily be an a performer at work because i had school work to focus on so i just needed to make sure that when it comes to work i keep my head above water and and so that was a trade-off but then there are years or there are phases where you want to make sure that you are excelling and 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 so forth take ownership you know i said earlier that you want to work even if you're working for somebody you need to work like that is your organization that is your company so you cannot have the mentality of of squandering whether you are squandering resources time and and whatever you're sitting on your laptop the whole day not working and and even if it's not going to to show or matter you will know about it and again for me i i i still say that you may think that nobody sees it but somehow whatever that you do even when nobody sees somehow it it, it always shows you know it it always comes back um so you need to take ownership when when you're at work you are mostly solving problems that's why you you will need to have problem solving skills you need to be solution oriented you need to take ownership of your own personal development you know in workplaces now there is no one who can say they do not have um, the opportunity to study or access to do that course or that or to have a mentor or uh, developmental opportunities in workplaces are there but you need to take ownership there are people that are just comfortable to just do their work they they don't want to grow they don't want to you know do other things and tomorrow they then blame the organization for 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 such um you also need to make an impact you know become a leader becoming a leader is is not necessarily about a position becoming a manager but it's it's about mastering your work you know becoming an expert in your area that you are actually a a leader in that area they are even maybe your colleagues that that look up to you and now on maximizing your impact because we spoke about making an impact i have taken you through the three that it is about knowing yourself knowing your environment and knowing others but i think for today i'll only be able to focus on knowing yourself um because when we're talking about knowing your environment now we're talking about understanding the organizational culture understanding your clients the brand of the organization and and knowing others it's basically knowing you but just in another you know human form so when it comes to knowing yourself the first important thing to know and master about yourself is mindset um but before we get to mindset because it requires self-awareness to know yourself i want us to start with becoming aware of who we are who are you what are the elements of your character that propel you to go forward what are the elements of your character that hold you back if you are self-aware 
you become aware of your emotions you become aware of your strengths and and it then makes it easy to to maintain control because you are able to self regulate but if you do not know yourself then it's not easy to regulate that which you do not know knowing yourself also requires you to manage your own career, manage your performance. It does happen that when you start a job, you know, because you're not that familiar with the environment, not familiar with the job itself, you, you may at the beginning agree to even performance targets that may not really be fair or they may be too high and you realize that maybe you're not doing well but as you know how it works how the performance management system work what your job really entails because sometimes what is on paper when you do it practically is then somehow a bit different and so forth so so you learn in the process but you need to make sure that there is nobody who is going to manage your career for you except you. It is you who knows what you are about. It is you who knows where you are going. It is you who knows why you are in that workplace at that particular time. What are you there to do? So you need to constantly keep check and, and, and manage that. You need to ensure that when it comes to performance management, you always know where you are in terms of your targets with your manager, get that feedback. It's not easy to, to get performance feedback, by the way. Um, I'm in performance management in HR and I myself don't even like performance management. I don't like managing <laughs> performance. I don't like my performance being managed because it's such an uncomfortable thing, but it's something that that needs to be done. I actually know one of the institutions that they had even stopped using performance ratings because of how it was just putting people in boxes and 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 so forth um but anyway we are not there on performance management your internal net worth who are you when we take away your qualifications when we take away your achievements when we strip you off of all these things that we can see on the external that we can see on paper what do you remain worth because that is the core of who you are. That is what um, gets you to bounce back when you have just sat in that performance review meeting and it didn't go so well. But if, if, if you are your achievements, then you will leave that meeting feeling like you are nothing, you know. But if you have your core intact, then you have something to fall back on. If if you know that there are things about you, that about your personality, your character, that also matter, that keep you intact, that keep you going, then even if tomorrow your qualification is not as relevant as it was or as cool as it was when you started three years ago, you still have the resilience to perhaps go back to school, do another qualification or, you know, um, get an, an advanced qualification or whatever, but you need, there are certain skills there are certain traits that you cannot get them from qualifications. You cannot get them from achievements. You cannot get them from experience, but they are essentially just the core of your being. And those are the things that you need to, to work on. And hence, it's important that even in a workplace, you don't just um focus on what you can do what you can accumulate but you always need to keep check of who are you becoming in the process as well because i have seen people that were climbing the ladder but man who they were becoming was something else so you don't want to do that. You don't want to compromise who you are, your being, and who you are becoming 
to acquire these things that may not even mean that much tomorrow. And you also just need to keep your checked baggage in check. That checked baggage, we're talking about basically the, the stereotypes that you may be holding, you know, the things that you may have grown up with that you may have, because remember as human beings, we have frames of references. So when, when you say something to me, I'm not just responding based on what you're saying, but I'm responding based on that thing having been said to me again by somebody back in my life and it was not nice at all and you know it is now triggering me so we need to keep such things in check when when we started working i know that some some workplaces would believe that you know what, even if you have problems, you must leave your problems at the door. You come in, do your work, you leave work, you take your problems there at the door. But but workplaces have realized that is not how it works. A human being is a holistic, you know, um, being. I cannot leave my issues at the door. I come in to work with my issues. So you need to understand that if you have your issues, you are working with other hundred people and they are hundred issues. So those are the things that you are navigating, you know, in a workplace. And the most important or the most possible person to navigate is yourself. So it's important to keep check of yourself, to work on yourself, to be aware of yourself and that makes it easier um, and more empathetic for you to then you know accommodate or interact with other people or respond to other people and have your own timelines please I know that as students you know we we have this plan that by the age of 23, I must have, you know, um, obtained that job. I By 25, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. If you're not careful, these timelines are what, you know, make us sink into depressions and, 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 and so forth. So you, you need to remember, there is somebody who may always be ahead of you, ahead of you in terms of, whatever the timelines they you know they they may get what you were hoping to get at a particular phase or stage in your life but it's important to keep your timeline have your lane and stick to your lane because sometimes we don't even know why things happen the way that they happen can i still continue i don't know how am i doing with time i will proceed um if 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 there's nothing so i mentioned that one of the things that you work on as you're working on yourself is the mindset now with the mindset there is research that has been done on having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset and i'm sure that looking at this too even if you may not be familiar with the two concepts we all want to have a growth mindset you don't want to be a fixed person because somebody who's fixed focus on the outcomes you know it's it's about the output and 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 that's it and remember my quotation earlier that it's not even about the award itself but it's about the work and what that also means is that it it is in the sometimes the the reward is not even in getting that salary or the bonus itself but the reward is sometimes spending those sleepless nights as a student you 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 will recall um studying for those exams you know trying to crack those um research uh projects questions you you would have experienced so much um, tension at the time, but overcoming that, overcoming those challenges, you realize that you come out on the other side, you know, an even better person. Um, so it's not even about then getting that qualification at the end of the day. It's not about getting the salary or the bonus, but it's about what you put in. It's about the journey and the process. So having a growth mindset, you believe that 
you know, you, you can work on your talent. So we may have the same talent and maybe somebody may be more advanced than yours, but you can actually work on it. Intelligence is something that you can work on and and you having a mind that that inquires you focus on the big picture and you focus on self remember i said in a workplace you are interacting with different characters different people there are people that you wish you could get them to see things the way you see them or to be the way that you want them to be because then it will just make life easier but that's not the real world the real world is somebody will refuse to see your point of view even if it is correct. You need to know what then do you do in that instance, you know, so you need to focus on yourself. Even when things are happening and they're happening around you, if you have a growth mindset, you are constantly looking at self to see what can I do? How do I get around the situation. How do I manage this? Yes, I have a difficult manager, but how do I, you know, respond to them? How do I make it bearable for myself? Seek an action feedback. Again, I say feedback is not very comfortable, but it is very helpful. It helps you to grow, take ownership of your learning and development, be more solution oriented and and be empowered you know when when you have a fixed mindset you have this victim mentality and people with victim mentality those are the people that create toxic cultures in workplaces mind you corporate cultures human employees also contribute to the culture because how you complain about this workplace this and this and that is not okay this and this is not working and whatever that makes the culture to be toxic because you are then feeding off the energies and those energies are becoming the organizational energy um when you have a fixed mindset you you don't really like feedback. You're always thinking about problems, not about solutions. You don't see opportunities in, in problems. And you believe that, ah, you know what? Some people are born intelligent. Some are born talented. And that is just the way it is. Um, life is just unfair like that. And I would then encourage that you perhaps even starting from today, work on the following as a student, even preparing for work, start to collaborate. It's important to collaborate. It's important to engage with others. It's important to work with others. We have different skills. We have our IQs are different. We have different talents, different strengths and weaknesses. Somebody's weakness may be my strength and, and, and so forth. So starting there to, to collaborate with others also helps you when you go into a workplace. Then you let go of this go at it alone mentality where you, because you want to sort of shine by yourself, you just want to do things by yourself. And I, I would also say, you know, check your limiting beliefs. There are certain there are certain things that we believe we cannot do. And if you really check why you believe that, um, you 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 will realize that maybe at some point somebody said it and and it really became, you know, so rooted that whether you do it consciously or subconsciously because you believe that you cannot do that particular thing you never even attempt it and can i also tell you that why it's important to check your limiting beliefs your your negative self-talk and so forth is because we are human beings we we on autopilot a lot our subconscious mind dominate you know, the, a, a larger percentage 
we operate in from the subconscious mind than the conscious mind. And there's a lot that is stored in the subconscious mind. And it is when you are intentional, you are reflecting, you, you, you bring things from the subconscious to the conscious and you are then able to eliminate, you know, you, you can filter thoughts that are serving you, beliefs that are serving you and those that are not serving you. And that then leads to the, the talk that you're having with yourself. Have you noticed that it doesn't matter how many people can tell you you are great, you are beautiful, you are smart, you can do this well done. If you yourself do not believe it, if you, the talk that you are having with yourself is not positive, it is, it is you know, undermining, you are seeing yourself as this, person who doesn't deserve to be on the table, then it, it, it doesn't matter who says what. It is what you say about yourself that actually uh, makes the difference. And this speaks to the imposter syndrome. You know, some of us, even when we were making it in our careers, it will be so difficult because then you will be sitting in this boardroom feeling like I do not belong here. There is this voice that tells you that you are such an imposter. You, you, you don't deserve to be there. You are not good enough. You are not ready. You are not experienced enough. And, and that with the self-talk, and, 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 and eliminating the limiting beliefs really helps for you to, it helps you build the necessary confidence. The other thing that you need to know and do is to acknowledge that you may not know it all when you begin. Even in a workplace, you've been there for 10 years, 15 years. There are some things that may be new, so you do not have to know everything before you can get started. You get started. You know, I read such a powerful message the other day on Monday that sometimes it's it's people with half our talent that are making it. We we are scared to do it because we feel that we are not ready. We we are not experienced enough. I've just graduated and 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 so forth. And and they may have even started without knowing what the next step will be. And sometimes you just need to take that first step and trust that the second step and the third step will unfold as, as you go along. The comparison game. Yes, with the world, with the social media and everything, you know, you're always going through your Facebook, your Instagram, checking and, you know, Facebook, you're thinking, but, you know, people are living the life. How come? Like, is, is it only me, you know, or, or what is happening here? So, so comparing yourself can inspire you, but I, I don't encourage it because, again, I think this are, you, you, I'm sure you would know that depression has gone on the rise. And even students themselves, they can become depressed. You know, you, you have expectations of, of getting a job at a particular time. You probably have a loan to pay off. You have your family to take care of. You have yourself to take care of. And you are looking at your somebody that you went to school with already. They are working. They are having this. They are having that. And you don't even seem to be close to that. But that can really, um, yeah, work against you. And when you enter a workplace as well, instead of being judgmental and criticizing, ah, but why are you not doing it this way? But why is it like that? And so forth, rather focus on bringing what is not there. Remember you are there because of your unique skill set, your unique personality and so forth. So take that and add value, bring what you feel is not there instead of sitting and pointing figures and criticizing and so forth. And the stereotype threat is, you know, being afraid because you are, you are like me, maybe if I can make an example with myself, I would have thought that 
I don't know, maybe at some point I was I was hired or recruited because I was meeting the EE target, you know, African women. I don't know. But what I what I know is that I have to believe that I can do the job because then I will have to live up to some stereotype threat that I'm, I don't even have facts around. And even if I do, but then so what? Because I still don't think they would have just gotten me because I'm an African. I believe that it will be because I qualified for the job. I can do the job. So that's what I need to focus on, not on what somebody may have whispered that, yeah, well, you just got hired because of this and that. And land helplessness, I think that is self-explanatory where we feel like, ah, you know, there's nothing I can do about this. It is what it is. And, and no, you can actually do something about it. It is, I'm looking at the time. It's 11.51, but anyway, confidence is the last thing that I'm going to cover in this presentation. So what confidence is, is just being clear and secure in your worth, value, capability, and potential. What I just want to talk about on confidence is that know the difference. There's a difference between confidence and self-confidence, and it's important. You need both, but self-confidence is is also what makes you to stick it out because confidence fluctuates so much you know um confidence you look good today um you dress smartly and i tell you you look good it pumps you up and tomorrow you know you are criticized for something then it quickly goes down so it fluctuates wildly due to all this external drivers um, and and it's not really always possible to control you you can manage it but you can't really control the external stimuli while self-confidence on the other hand it's something that you build internally it, it you build it by your inner thoughts your words how you, how you look at yourself becoming aware of yourself and again i want to emphasize capitalizing on your strengths you see coaching is about helping people to exploit their strengths and to manage their weaknesses whether managing their weaknesses means improving them or, or you know working around them but but that is what coaching essentially is and and i believe anyone can coach themselves it, it's nice to have somebody who helps you to do that but even as as a person, as a human being, you you can coach yourself through life. You can coach yourself in 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 a workplace. This also fluctuates. Self confidence also fluctuates, but its fluctuation is 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 far more gradual and it's not as dramatic as the confidence. Because with self confidence, you build it brick by brick. You know, waking up in the morning, telling yourself. I can do this job. Um, yes, it's challenging. Yes, it, it, it is this, but that that positive self-talk, substituting those limiting beliefs to, to you know, proper beliefs and, and so forth, those um, build your, your self-confidence. And the, the fluctuations also, when, when it goes down, it's also due to lack of awareness you see, if if you if you're not aware of yourself, why self awareness is so important, is because then you are caught by surprise. You know, you 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 get attacked easily, and you feel attacked as well. But if I know my strengths, if I'm aware of my strengths, if I'm aware of my potential and my abilities. Even if I'm sitting there and somebody is my manager or my colleague or whoever, they're talking down on me. It's not easy for me to, to you know, sink into depression or become negative and bitter because I know myself. I know my abilities. 
Emotions, if you are aware of your emotions, then it's easy to keep track of your emotions. Otherwise, again, you will be caught by surprise. If you don't know that emotionally you are triggered by this and that, then you may just find yourself bursting in a formal meeting where you're supposed to be professional, but because somebody said something that you know caught you off guard or triggered you somehow, then you are responding in a manner that even when you think about it later at night you just want to hide yourself under the blankets and not even go to work tomorrow and that's why it's important to focus on self you focus on self and the external stimuli will not have to have that much bearing in your life that much in your career because that means you will be able to self-regulate, self-manage. And yeah, I think that is the end for me for today. Thank you very much, um, Cleo. Um, I see on the screen you're also just sharing your contact details um, with anyone who's interested in, in connecting with you. Yes. No. Okay, so while um, some may want to write down some of that information, there's just uh, two questions that I think we have uh, like two minutes to do those, um, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, okay, so th there was just a comment from Tina. She said that she likes the idea of being intentional in managing her career. Mm -hmm. um, and then Paul asked, uh, what are some of the skills I could focus on that are most important? So from, you know, from your, from where you are coming from in your presentation, um, what are the skills that you think one could really prioritize in terms of developing? Yes, I would, I think the one that I've ended on, Lisa, confidence for me is it takes the trophy because see with somebody who has confidence may even beat a person with with the highest qualifications and more experience whether in an interview or wherever you know because if if you have confidence you 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 have confidence in in your abilities and if you have confidence in your ability it gives you confidence to even articulate and express yourself you are able to articulate those abilities you are able to express yourself most of our ideas and um goals and whatever they, they trapped in communication so even if i can communicate but if I'm not confident, then then it becomes a problem. So after confidence will come communication. So what I would say about communication also is that know your strengths when it comes to communication as well. I find myself, even though I can speak to people, but I've realized that at work sometimes I can become easily like mm, maybe intimidated or whatever in a meeting, but I know that I have a strength of writing. So where I know that I need to make a point and it has to be made, I will then write it down. So I'll make sure that even if I missed an opportunity in a meeting or wherever, where I get the opportunity to do it, it will be followed whether by email or by a memo or whatever that it takes. So I think knowing yourself, for me, self-awareness is a skill. It's just a skill as well because you are aware then of what your strengths are just like you become aware of your weaknesses so i would put confidence i would put communication i would put self-awareness at the top of the list and and maybe followed by collaboration um you know because i think most of my presentation as well i try to show the importance and the emphasis of working with others that 
at, at school, you may get away with working by yourself, but at work, you need other people. So for you to collaborate, obviously, you then need to have, you know, interpersonal skills. You need to have integrity because when you're working on a team, your team members need to trust that you will do the job um you will do what is expected of you and things will not fall through the cracks on 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 your watch and and so forth so those four for me i would say those are important if i have answered the question thank you very much Cleo. um yeah there weren't any other further questions um so i'm just going to end off the session um, just want to share my screen. Um, from our side, um, the Directorate for Counseling Career Development, we would love to know how you experienced today's presentation. What did you learn? What else do you need to know? So if you've got any feedback or follow up questions about um, this topic, you are welcome to send an email either to Mrs. Mandu Makanya as well as myself. Our email addresses are there on the screen and then uh, we will be posting um, a recording of this session on our YouTube channel and that is available at youtube.com forward slash Unisa careers. Then I would also just want to invite you. Um, we've got a session on Monday, the 29th of August um, about financial intelligence for young professionals. Uh, which will be presented by Lisa Knight from um, Sunlum. You can find um, this invitation with a link to join the session on the Mayanisa events calendar. So please make a note of also attending that session. Okay. So from my side, um, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Clea, for all the um, very valuable information that you shared. Um, I would also just want to concur with um, Tina, Tina mentioned um, the importance or what stood out for her is that um, being intentional in managing your career and uh, working on your self-confidence are very important aspects of um, uh, you know, creating a successful career path. So I'm just going to ask my colleague, um, Mr. Begim Zorbe, to end off the session for us. Excuse me, Lisa. Excuse me, Lisa. I'm sorry yes. to budge in. Sorry, Peggy. There is um, um, a question on the new uh, category. If you can check that one. Okay. Uh, it's a quickie um, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cleo, um, so there's a question that came in. Are there helpful techniques for introverts and shyness to maneuver in the workplace? Um, that's a very tricky one. <laughs> that's a very interesting one. Are there techniques for introverts and people that are shy? You know, I'm not exactly an extrovert myself, but I'm sure if if I talk, I may not necessarily sound like I'm a shy person. I may not sound like I'm an introvert. Um, I always say when when I respond to this question, it's usually not in a professional setup. And so I may be a bit brutal. Please forgive me about that. Because at the end of the day, as brutal, I did a one that I may be a bit brutal. I've, I'm learning. I've learned in my career. I'm learning in my life generally that there is not even anything cute about being shy you know sh being shy is actually that something that your 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 mind tells you in order for you not to go out for what you believe you deserve or you can do or you are capable of on and and, and so forth so to then maybe be less brutal and, and empathetic is to say that focus 
on your strengths again when when you know what your strengths are when you know what your capabilities are it's it's easy to maneuver around your weaknesses including being shy so if you know that you you are not necessarily one to to raise your hand or speak your opinion in a meeting you may want to find a different platform of still ensuring that your voice is heard even though it is not in a meeting set up but again i i still believe that shyness comes from the lack of i don't want to say the lack of confidence but really not trusting what you have to offer not trusting what what you have to say so so you you feel that mm, i don't think it's really good enough and, and 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 that makes you then to close up you you don't want to expose yourself and and that is why i'm saying shyness it's it's quite a tricky one because you if if you tell a person to to work around it and and play safe then you're just continuing to feed this this thing that may not even you know be real so i i would want the person to really dig deep why 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 do i feel uncomfortable around people why do i feel and and the more wise you answer it, you will get to the source of the problem the source of you being shy the source of of i i have forgotten the other word that was used so so I, I guess what i'm saying is it's important to confront your limiting beliefs it's important to confront some of your weaknesses because some of them it's really just a fear of something and when you realize that a fear of looking stupid and and whatever is actually nothing compared to a fear of not even of still looking stupid if 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 i can say that and by not saying anything because you were afraid to speak and and so forth then you realize that actually if you weigh them you will rather go with this one you will rather take a leap of faith and 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 fail but at least you've done something than live with the regret of only if you could have, only if you could have raised your hand, only if you could have. But yeah, I think digging deeper to the source. Why? Why are you feeling that way? And why again? Why? Up, up until you cannot answer the why, you actually have the answer. You have the reason. You have the source and that can then be attended to. Because being shy, I think it's being shy. It's a result. It's a result of something. It's a cover up of the actual issue. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much, Cleo. Um, just my two cents worth. Um, I in the chat I did post a video. Also, um, there's a talk by Susan Kane, who wrote a book about quiet, the power of introverts. Um, which she did during a TED talk. So um, that is a very interesting video to go and watch because in my experience, people also always confuse um, the concept of being shy um, and being introverted. They are not similar. They are not the same thing. <laughs> so I just want to encourage those who would want to or who feel like they can't um, you know, function in an extroverted world um, as an introvert, um, you know, to go and watch that talk. Um, but I do agree with you that often, um, you know, if you feel that you are introverted, there's a lot of um, strengths that you have as a professional and as a person that you can also contribute to the workplace. Um, but it is important for you to think about, um, you know, shyness and how it may, um, you know, impact on your career development. Um, but I would recommend that book and the video by Susan Kane if you would like to explore how one could go about doing that. OK, thank you. I'm now going to ask um, Becky to end off the session for us. Thank you, Becky. Good day, everyone. My name is Becky, as Mr. Hazel indicated. 
it is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this event. On behalf of my colleagues at Directorate for Counseling and Career Development, I would like to express my vote of thanks to our guest speaker, Ms. Pagati, for accepting our invitation at a short notice and for sharing with us your knowledge and expertise on today's topic concerning the world of work. I have no doubt that this valuable information you shared will, will, show, will, you shared will go a long way towards equipping students with the practical workplace skills. I think you also painted a clear picture of a workplace environment. What is expected of me in a workplace as an employee and the skills and attributes that I need to have. So as a directorate, we are grateful for your support and contribution for empowering our students with practical knowledge and skills. Thank you so much, Ms. Pagati. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you, Becky. Again, thank you very much for those of you who made time to attend the session this morning. And um, just a reminder that we will publish a recording of the session on our YouTube channel. Um, the address is available on the Q&A. Um, while you are there, um, please also subscribe to the channel and um, check out the other videos that we've posted of sessions um, such as these um, that will also help you with your career development. Thank you very much.